Hey guys, what's up? Quick video for you today. I thought today I'd do something a little different and do uh, a how-to video for carving. I've been working on uh, these little frogs. So, you've see, if you're on any of the whittling pages, you might have seen me post this already. It's uh, something I worked on. I got uh, the idea from Sarah's book. Here, she um, has this carving for a cheeky toad, which, as you can see, is quite a bit different than what I'm doing. This this is awesome. Her toad is great. Um, I tend to work with smaller pieces of wood than what uh, what she uses for that pattern. And um, I also kind of wanted to have one that was a knife only type carving, something uh, simple along the lines of uh, Doug Linker's owls, you know, things like that. And um, yeah, so I came up with a little pattern. I've done a, a whole bunch of these guys trying to uh, nail down pretty much what I like. and. And also is, is simple, it's easy, you know, 20, 30 minute type carving and, and you're done. And it's uh, kind of what I came up with. So, um, for this carving, I'm, another way I'm trying to make it easy is by not having measurements. So, because if, if you're brand new to carving, then you may not have the certain size wood that for whatever tutorial watching, like say you uh, go to watch a Doug Linker video and he's using an inch and a quarter block of wood, but you're brand new to carving and you ordered all one inch blocks of wood. Now listen, you're having to do like fraction conversions because he's saying, you know, go up five eighths. Well, five eighths out of one and a quarter um, is equivalent to this amount for whatever block of wood you have. And it's just, um... so all I'm gonna do is draw a whole bunch of lines on a block of wood and uh, that way you don't have to do any measuring and it should make it a little more simple to get the carving done. So if you have a one inch block of wood, one by one by uh, two or well, I would do one by one by probably three and a quarter or one and a quarter by one and a quarter, one and a half, which is what this is, one and a half, one and a half by two um, or two by two by maybe two and a half, um, you know, roughly. See, that's the thing is it doesn't have to be exact uh, because we're gonna draw lines uh, and um, use spacing on the blocks for those measurements so you don't actually have to measure anything. And if that doesn't make sense now, it will here in a second when we start with the lines. So let me find a pencil. Okay, so what I'm using specifically is one and a quarter by one and a quarter and roughly two inches tall. As you can see, the cut is not perfectly straight, but that doesn't matter because we're going to be removing wood from there anyway. So you want to find center on all your sides. So grab your pencil, and when you put it about where center is, put your finger there, and that will keep your pencil straight. If that's not a trick you already know from other videos. So do your lines. And now, there's a chance you're off a little bit, so flip the block over and do it that way. And that way if you are off, then it will correct it. There we go. You end up with a thicker line, but that's all right. You know about where it's going to have to be exact. And I'm going to do the top too. So for this carving, the top is going to be the cut piece. Um, the factory cut is square, so I'm going to leave that alone as the bottom. So I'll go across here. Maybe I should sharpen my pencil. Anyway, so there and there. Now, the next step is from this spacing, the spacing here. So I like to go about where center is and then a little bit less. So the line I draw isn't center from here to here. It's a little, the spacing here is less than this side. So just a little bit, uh, it's just a um, personal preference thing. You can, you can go dead center, you can go a little bit less, but for this carving, a little bit less is actually better for other reasons. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. And once again, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be about. That's one of the things that makes this carving easy. It's nothing is overly specific. Okay, let me do that. Um, we're gonna decide which side we want to be the front and we'll just go here. Let's draw a big F. So that's gonna be the face. So, so here's where the measuring gets easy. So that line we drew there, we're gonna take one, go across the front and the two sides, there. See, no measuring at all. And then the same thing for the for the top, and that's gonna be a little crooked, but once again, doesn't matter. 
So take that, take that, and we want that for the top as well. So now here's where it starts to get a little weird, weirder. So this line to this line, cut that in half and draw a line. So easy, easy, easy. Okay, so we have center lines, we have side lines, bottom line, top line, on three sides. The back is pretty much plain still. And then we have the center line, the small line, and then that line cut in half. So the next thing we want is from this line to this line, I'm sorry, from this line to the bottom, we want that cut in half. So about in half. There we go. And then on your front, from this line to this line, let's draw a line there in half. So as you can see, you don't have to go all the way on the sides because it's really more about the front with, uh, with that line. Okay, now my least favorite cut on the entire carving is this whole section where we did this line down here and over. So this, all this is gonna get removed, all that. So if you have a scroll saw, do it. If not, then you gotta chip it out. And um, it's my least favorite thing in the entire world to do. So this carving is really easy. You could use uh, a pocket knife for this, which, which I've already tried and done. Uh, I am gonna use uh, my Helvy for this just because. Um, at this point, if you have not already stroked your knife to sharpen it, then you need to do that now. Um, especially because this cut is so particular, because you're cutting down down into the grain like that, and it's just, um, it's uncomfortable, I guess, is a good way to put it. So, down like that. Come across, and then, well, I guess my knife's a little sharp. Let's try it again. There we go. You know what? Let's chip it out this way first. I did this the, on the last frog that I carved and uh, I like this method a lot better. So I think Doug Winker said in a video, if you can't cut across the grain and have that be shiny, then you know your knife's not sharp. Um, I literally just dropped this, so it's, it's good. But you want to be able to do that. So yeah, no measuring. So this line, to this line, all that stuff, gone. So now that I got a little bit of an angle, now I'm gonna go down into it. See if that makes it a little easier. See, it's just that cutting into the grain. It sucks. There we go. It'll eventually go. It's just gonna chip and it's gonna chatter. And um, I do have a scroll saw. If you, I have just skipped this part and gone straight to the scroll saw, which makes it way easier. So as you can see, I'm cutting kind of in front of the line. We are gonna end up backing up a little bit, but that's uh, something that comes a little bit later in the carving. This is also gonna be pretty jagged and crappy, but once again, when we refine this area, that all gets fixed, so not a big deal. Good enough for now. Okay, for this next section, now that we got that hole taken out, we're gonna take from this line and carve to here. So from here to here, so an angle cut, right? So just like this. And be careful, don't cut too much this off. Like I said, it doesn't matter too much because it gets fit changed later. There we go. Just drag that bad boy across.
Yeah, that's where I want my dog, right here where I'm using the scalpel. That's all right, he's down there now. So we have a little bit of an angle, we have a little bit of an angle up, this flat part here. So the next part is we want to do a V cut here. So for this V cut, I'm gonna cut in, and then I'm gonna go from up here down to that to meet it. See, and then from this line to that, take that out. There, see, so same thing on this side. Go deep if you can but you, want to, you only want to go to about where that line is. So that's one of the reasons why that line is there. So once again, doesn't have to be exact. If you go deeper the line, it's not the end of the world. And I'll get washed out in the end. So from this line to here. Got a particularly tough piece of basswood this time. There. So now you can see what it's supposed to look like. Maybe uh, make it a little more pronounced. So flat spot. Big old beak looking thing, big old swoop dress looking part. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do, well, so this whole section here is basically gonna be our eyes, right? And it's a frog, so the eyes are gonna sit more on the top of the head. So we're gonna have this, this whole section here are the eyes. So think of this as like the back of the eye. So from this line, draw like, kind of like a swoop kind of deal you can you can make it way more round or you can have it you know not as round if I want to use words at some point um, that's all subjective once again it does not have to be perfect it's all in a however you end up drawing it which is totally not a big deal so so then all this stuff here here we're gonna hog all that off moose out Move, smooth. Okay, so nothing special about these cuts, you just remove all that. Kind of start seeing the shape a little bit to come out. So you want to get your pencil back out. So these lines that were on the side, let's go ahead and draw those back on, especially up here on the eyes. Good enough. All right. So what we want to do is for this part, we want to start tapering the frog's head. So kind of like, you know, from this line up to where this guy is. So that'll taper the frog's head up a little bit. You'll see what I mean here in a second, if that doesn't make sense. So just take it and just remove some wood. Start to give it a little bit more of a rounded look as well, which is cool, we want that. There. 
Perfect. <laughs> there. Perfect. Okay, our next cut is going to be v a V cut here and here. You can do the back too. I end up kind of like them better without the back done. Uh, so once again, it's personal preference. You know, try it out, see what you like. So V cut here, and I like to do not a wide V cut, uh, kind of more of a, a narrow V cut, if that makes sense. Doesn't have to be super deep, just a little bit to separate the head from the body. So there, head separated. We gotta clean we'll end up cleaning all this up later all right so these lines are on the front see so, you know, this one here and then on the side is here so the same thing on the side right we want to remove this corner these corners we want those gone so let's come over here and just chop them boom no big deal okay now here's what we're gonna do with that from where the top, if you can see that, from where the top of this cut is, see how it's flat here, this is kind of like the bottom cut, this is the top cut, from the top of that cut, take that and bring it down. So like this. That will kind of give you your frog's smile. I guess you could do it in reverse, you don't want to be angry, that'd be cool. There. And then we'll kind of taper this down a little bit from this line down to the body, just to kind of round it out a little bit. Nothing special. Not deep, just a little bit to take a little bit off to give it a little bit more of a rounded look. Then let's go ahead and take these corners off too. We don't want those. We don't want them on the back either. So once again, so from this line to this line, that corner comes off. So, no tape measure, no rulers, just lines. Okay. Here's a wrap. Okay. Once again, pencil. What I do is those side lines. So you can still see it here. Let's draw that dude back on there here. And here, and we know about where it is because this line's still here, and also that's where we did our cuts earlier. So I'll draw that line there, and then same thing on the side. We know it comes up to about there. About there. Okay, so now that we got these front lines drawn, so hold on a second, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that off. Let's take those corners off too. There. So we're going to go from where this cut is with this line down to this corner, right? So draw a line there, same thing on the other side. And then something very similar. So from this, so we did from the center to here. So from this one to the bottom of here, so here to here, this one to the bottom of this one. That's gonna give us a leg there. Okay, so for this cut, angle your knife like this. You wanna dig in super deep if you can. Add it at an angle. The better the angle, the more round the leg is, and that's nice. There we go. Do your cut. That should chip right out. See? Chipped out. Cool. For this one, I'm gonna go the other way. Once again, super deep, super like 
tangled. All right, so now that we got these guys done, we're gonna do the front. So, same kind of concept. Go here, angled, super deep, and cut down. And then back up, cut that little, pop that little dude out. just like that. Okay. So we got some legs now. And now what you want to do is come in here do a cut and then where this line is over let's just let's take that out and round it off a little bit careful that you don't cut the foot off that gives us a little bit of a belly now you can taper this as much as you want I like to leave a little bit out, I think. There. So. There we go. Okay. So let's do the back legs now. No, just take the little chip out. So we're going to do the back legs is from here all the way over to this leg. So we want to cut there. Uh, the trick to this is, take your knife, dig it in as deep as you can, and take it over. Now for the bottom part, so see it was not quite straight, it was angled a little bit. For the bottom I like to angle it, once again, quite a bit, because it makes that bottom leg a little bit smaller. Uh, and rounds it off at the same time. There we go. And then maybe just take a chip out there and separate it from there. Cool. So as you can see, we have like the makings of the leg now. So if you've watched other carving videos, you know what a three corner cut is. I do that one here, so cut there. And that makes that a little bit round. So sometimes I do it up here as well. Not a not a huge cut, just enough to round it a little. So you could do it this leg too. I have sometimes I don't always, but okay. So back over on this side. So once again, super deep. Over. And then on the pullback, more angled. that guy and then whoops we broke it it's all right it didn't matter and then here for our three corner cut I wonder if you can hear me breathing on this thing that'd be embarrassing legs. Hmm. That needs to be a little more a little more deep. There we go. And I'm gonna start picking at it. I'm gonna stop. You see? It's starting to look like a frog. Alright, so the next thing I'm gonna do is the back legs. So, so you know, come over here, so we want them to come down. And once again, that's what these lines are 
that we've already drawn. So let, let's take it this way. Down there. There we go. See how it separated the back leg from the body. So one more time over here. There we go. Done. And then once again, do a cut there, kind of swoop it in to give a little bit of a butt. And then these corners here, I like to kind of chip those a little bit also. Once again, just kind of makes it a little more round. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then also kind of clean up. There's usually like a pretty sharp edge there. So I'll take that guy out. Okay, so now we've got that done. We got the head pretty much blocked out, the legs, and the back legs. It's that little chip trying try to stay in there. Now, so from about where this line would be, if you didn't, if you didn't do a, a back V cut earlier, so let's taper that up a little bit. You know, it just kind of rounds the body off a little bit more. You can start rounding at this point like I'm doing. Take these sharp edges off. Then you want to remove all this here. Um, where the cuts are from when they, the bandsaw marks, you know, from when they portion the wood out. You can also taper it down under. So from here, down under, if you want, so you just come like this and Makes the legs a little more pronounced. I don't think I did this on the last one. Just once again, be careful not to cut your legs off. So at this point when you're rounding, if you're say gonna round from this line down like this section, cut down to it and then up from here, if that makes sense. Because it kind of like helps with the head shape. I do know words, I promise. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. I want to do a little bit of cleanup real quick. Just get rid of some of that stuff. That'll be fine. That's just nitpicking at it. Okay. <clears throat> All right, for the eyes. So with these guys here, you could do the eyes bigger. So you could cut down into it and then cut in to make this section bigger. Actually, I wanna do that anyway, I think. Oh, I'm just a little bigger for this. Let's 
go more. And good enough. So if you wanted to do like the Doug Linker style cartoon eyes, you would want these bigger. Um, I've been doing separate eyes and I, I don't know, just not, not with everyone, but just seems like I like it a little better when they're separate. So I'm gonna take a little bit more off this and I'll show you why here in a second. Round that off a little bit. Okay. So now, so now this might have some bad cuts from earlier. We we're just kind of roughing it out. So just go in, do a cut to kind of chip that out. Any little imperfections. Let's just get rid of it now. There we go. And that's about how big I want the eyes anyway. So now I'm going to go over here and do just a small little cut there. Bring those cheeks up. Okay, for the eyes. See, we have that center line. So we're gonna cut down there. To separate these two eyes. So just a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other. I always end up having one a little bit bigger than the other. But looks like it's not that bad this time. I kind of want to round these edges just a little bit. So I just take off like just a minuscule amount. Just little, almost scrapings rather than cuts. And then also let's get rid of all this. Those bandsaw marks. The re reason for that is the when you paint it, it doesn't look as good. The paint doesn't stick to those parts as well as it does standard wood and there we go it's funny I can see imperfections in the camera that I can't see just looking at it the lighting's pretty terrible in here I've tried erasing pencil marks, but cutting them off just seems to work a lot better. Sometimes I taper this little arm up a little bit. You don't have to. Makes them look more stout if you don't. Okay, let's do the eyes next. So for the eyes, you wanna draw them on it up here and just really just a little half circle on you know leave a little bit of meat here in case it chips out if you have a detail knife you could totally switch to a detail knife at this point if you are using just one rough out knife like I'm doing then this is when you're gonna want to restrope your knife 
because you're getting in to doing tiny, tiny little cuts. See? Is that blurry? So, not deep, almost, um, imagine a little more pressure than when you drew on. Just enough to make a cut. Angled a little bit as much as you can. That'll make it a little easier popping that wood. So we do that cut, and then we want to just kind of go in and remove just enough to separate the eyes. And then let's do a bottom cut too. So from one cut of the eye to the other side. There. And you can, so you can round this eye off if you want. Um, I haven't really been doing too much of that, but I do very small three corner cuts in the eyes. Fuzzy there, it's not coming up. There we go. Okay, the finishing touch is going to be for the mouth. So remember when we did these cuts here to bring it down, or rather to make a smile kind of thing going on. So we're gonna use that. So from this point, come here and go down to where you got this line here, go across and then up to that. Now you have to be super gentle with this cut because it will chip out. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You're just you're just trying to make a channel for maybe some antiquing or something to go in there to create a shadow to show a lip line. That's that's all you're doing. So with your V cut that we're doing here, um, you don't want it. You don't want a really really wide V. You want a super super shallow shallow V. And once again, it does not have to be deep either. So. Just kind of go in, come across, and then up that other side. And then just best you can, very gentle. See that just the tiniest piece of wood is being removed.
can brush it out. It usually doesn't come out all the way. And then I have to go in and do little chips. Yeah, that didn't turn out too bad. And then at the end, we'll cut there. Give them some smile lines. And that's it. You got a happy frog. Round the eyes off a little bit more, I suppose. There we go. I like them. Clean that up. You always go back over your carving, so you need to clean up. But anything, you know, like these little imperfections here, that's not a big deal. It's just gonna end up looking a little bit like wrinkles on the frog. But that I don't like. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Yeah, so see how like that cut I just did, you know, is more pronounced than, than say over here. Not a big deal. Looks like wrinkles on a frog, so you're fine. So we got the back. He looks pretty good. Looks happy. And we got all the lines cut off. And that's it. You're done. Except for pain, of course. Alright, it's gonna go ahead and about do it for uh, this video. I'm not gonna go into painting the frog uh, because it's a frog, you can literally paint him whatever color you want. Um, what I did recently with my daughter is uh, I pulled up Google and I just typed in exotic frogs and I showed her that frogs come in every color you could possibly imagine neons and splotches and all kinds of stuff. And so she came up uh, with this one purple's her favorite color. So purple polka dots for her i did a green one and I, I have i got like five or six on the shelf over there a couple are a little bit better than than those or even the one that we did for the video but um you know sometimes carvings are like that right so if you got kids it's a fun thing to do uh if they're not carving yet you know maybe a little young like my daughter is um carve a couple of these frogs and paint with them it's really fun they're gonna love it and they end up with something cool and you guys get to have a whole like parental thing. So with that said, um, I also wanted to touch base or touch real quick on, I am by no means any kind of expert carver, um, not Doug Linker, Alaska Woodchuck, Share My Art, Gene Messer, any of those guys. Like I'm absolutely nowhere near any of their skill level. But um, I did think the frog thing was pretty cool. I thought I could do it and I thought I could show it. And um, for you guys out there that are much better carvers than me, you're gonna be able to take this and make it even better than I have. Um, but at the same time, for people that are new, I think this will work for them as well. So, good, you know, middle of the road kind of thing. So, if you got some pointers, tips, questions, concerns, whatever, just let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.